Hey, what's up guys? My name's Curtis. I'm your boy C-Love and I'm about to drop this hot one. So grab your gloves. Let's get ready to do some work. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make these giant dominoes and mega Nito case. First thing you'll notice is if you put a five in there, kind of makes it look like a face when you're carrying it around. That's fun. That was part of my design. Uh, I'm gonna show you about all the horrific mistakes that I made. So hopefully if you decide to do this, it'll be a whole lot easier. Let's go on and take a look. All right, I've got a couple pictures of the setup here. You're gonna set your stop block to 11 inches. That way you don't have to measure off every single individual piece. Start off with three 10 foot long one by sixes. Those actually measure five and a half inches wide. That's why you set your length to 11 inches because you wanna be about twice as long as you are wide. Sand them down to 80 grit so that you're not sanding individual pieces. And then I'm gonna set a stop block at five and a half inches and set the depth on my miter saw so that I can cut the center line down the uh, cards take a take a look here you can see and then here in a moment again I'll show you uh, I'll pause it and show you right here drill the uh, center line gives you a nice nice neat cut this step right here is not critical it seemed great like a great idea at the time I have no idea what I was doing um, you definitely do not need to do this this is the sled that I made for marking the grid lines on your dominoes pieces it's gonna make it mega easy. Uh, it's gonna go a whole lot quicker. Uh, the way you build this baby, weigh a couple of your dominoes pieces on your uh, on your table. You're gonna need a scrap for um, setting your depth on your miter on your forcement bit. You're gonna weigh this board on top of your dominoes pieces and secure this board to this one while it's flat on the table. Same on this side. Put your little stop right here. Whenever uh, whenever you're securing this down, um, you wanna make sure that you flush right here. Um, you don't wanna be all, you don't wanna be all jankety. And you guys know I like to say this, we're not building missiles here. Um, I, I, I do want these to be pretty close. Um, so this is this is why I made the template, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot for it. I'm gonna see how it goes. I wanted to cover the measurements real quick. Um, board's gonna be 11 inches long, five and a half wide. That means you're spacing, my spacing, three quarters of an inch, inch, inch for your pip, half inch space, inch for your pips, half inch space, inch for your pips, and three quarters of an inch. And then you're gonna repeat on this side. Um, make your measurements and mark it on the outside of your sled here. And you're gonna see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna zoom right through this. So go ahead and take a look. Here's a side view of the sled and a very primitive photo edit. I'm gonna go on and zoom right through marking these lines on my cards while I try out a couple new filters for the first time for my video here. The sled was uh, absolutely a terrific idea. Uh, I'm sure my measurements weren't 100% precise, but by the time it was all said and done, I definitely got the effect that I was going for um, as opposed to trying to freehand drill the pips. Uh, this, this definitely gave me a very reliable guide. That looks pretty mighty fine to me. Let's go on and get these babies marked up where we're gonna drill our pips. I just did this step for me as a, another visual reference. Uh, I wanna make sure I have a whole set, no duplicates or anything. I don't want to mess my cards up at this point, but I'm still going to do that anyways. Um, here's the one inch Forstner bit that I'm going to use to dive head first right in my nightmare here. First thing you should notice is the little spacing mechanism that I have set up on my drill press here. I bolted the two by four down and grabbed whatever I could to give me the spacing I need to drill the pit. 
pips on the outside of all my cards. This is definitely not my best setup, but the least of my worries at this point. We're gonna go on and take a mega slow motion look at me drilling one of every single one of the pips way too deep. Uh, this is gonna make this project a whole, whole lot more painful. And I really had no idea at this point. Um, so I'm gonna go on and carry on. I'm gonna zoom right, right through Joe and all these pips on the outside here. You see my, my little spacer. Uh, I'm just gonna keep on going, drill every single one of the ones on the outside. And here in a moment, I'll get done with that and take off my mega fancy spacer. And then I'm gonna drill all of the remaining pips uh, in the center. Uh, take another look here. And every single one of them is way too deep. Um, I don't know this at this point, so I'm gonna go on and keep sanding, sand them all down to 220 this time. A little bit smoother, clean them up. Uh, shot back them all off. You don't want any uh, uh, sanding dust or anything in your pips or your center line. I'm gonna need a spot to dry them off while after I stain them, so I'm gonna go ahead and Put this uh, drawing rack together, cedar plank, a couple filters, a couple screws, and I'm just going to slather this stain on there. Never done this before, uh, but I'm having a great time. You can see there's way too much running off and stuff and not worried about it at all. Stain the part that you were holding on to. You're going to wait about 15 minutes and wipe off your excess. was mega proud of this next part both for the idea of using a syringe to fill in the pips and for the video edit uh, this is this is also new for me uh, for reference I put about two milliliters of paint in every single one of the pips and at this point I still don't know that I'm gonna run into a horrific problem um, very shortly you guys will see this um, I ended up having to drill out every single one of these pips that you see me filling up right now. Um, and I did one coat with a, with a tiny little brush of primer and one coat of the top coat. I think the syringe would have worked a whole lot better if I wouldn't have drilled my pips so deep. Once the paint dried, uh, you can see right here, it just did not turn out at all like I had hoped. Uh, but we gotta keep going. Um, get you some practice on your uh, scrap piece, filling in your center line. And of course I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, I'll just uh, backfill them in and hopefully they'll dry, you know, flush and look respectable. And no, they didn't. If you haven't picked it up yet, I'll just go on and say it. Do not drill your pips too deep. That is gonna make this project very, very long and painful. As I mentioned earlier, I ended up drilling all these out and hand painting them with a little baby paintbrush and going with it. You stack your 28 cards up and they're gonna measure about 20 and a quarter inches. So we're gonna slap together a case for this baby. Start off with a 10 foot one by eight. Cut your bottom piece to 22 and a quarter inches. Your sides are gonna be 20 and three quarters inches and your end pieces will be seven and a quarter inches. I just showed you the little screen door pulls that I use for handles for my case. Um, you'll see in the end, I end up using white handles instead of the chrome ones that I uh, showed you just now. Pre, uh, make your measurements, pre-drill your holes and um, put your screws in there. I was just gonna make this case for the video, but I decided I had to finish it first so you guys could see what it looked like. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to look at my videos. I got a whole lot more on the way, so hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.